right, welcome everybody to the 2016 MSPF Photo Slam, first annual Photo Slam, or as some people call it, the Olympics of street photography. We're happy to uh, host this event. It's something that we wanted to do for a while. So we invited street photographers from all over the world over the last several days to submit images and for the opportunity to have a live review in front of an audience by very experienced, world-renowned photographers. So we're very happy. We have a lot of entries, and we selected 20 images that we're going to try to get through them. It's going to be time permitting. So I'm just going to go over the, the layout or the rules, if you want, if you will. Um, first, I want to introduce our uh, judging panel. Uh, we have Martin Parr. Richard Calvar and Tomas Lazar. And we want to thank them for being here and, and for helping us launch this event. So we're really uh, very grateful for that. So we're going to be showing the images that were selected. We selected these images uh, randomly or uh, from all the entries. There were no, uh, no particular uh, selection process. There was no judging. So uh, we just selected 20 that uh, we think that could, use, uh, could get a good review. And what we're going to do is we're going to show the image, and I'm going to say the name of the, of the photographer that sent it. We are recording the event, so it's going to be posted as soon as we can on the website so they can see the actual review and the entire world, actually. And each, each uh, judge is going to have 30 seconds to a minute to, to give their opinion about the image, say whatever they want to say about the image, and then they're going to give it a score. So they're going to raise their, their number and with their score, and we're going to tally up, and at the end, we're going to see who has the, uh, the highest uh, score. Okay, so one of the great uh, genres of, of photography, or indeed street photography, is through the car window. And this is a pretty adequate and, and quite interesting example of that genre. The flying eagle, big bird in the middle there is very nice. Uh, I like the... Um, possible bird shit on the, on the um, window, and the relationship between the two is, is noted. I would say uh, it's slightly let down by the use of the window is pretty um, prosaic. It, he could have done, or he or she could have done more with arranging the window to get it a bit more interesting. It's a bit dull. It's just like out of focus and there, and not really contributing much, apart from the fact we know it's now a car window. So I think it's a pretty good effort, and it has some atmosphere. Uh, it has its limitations and it has its strengths. I mean, I, I was saying to Martin before, because we saw the picture up on the screen, that um, uh, maybe the guy just forgot to clean his window. Uh, but I guess that's, that's probably not true. Uh, I would more or less agree with Martin. I mean, uh, you know, this has been done before many times and will be done again uh, many times. It's not bad. Uh, it doesn't uh, overwhelm me. Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's pretty good. Okay. Tomas? Uh, yeah, uh, I think also that's a pretty good picture. I've seen quite a lot of uh, those images. Uh, I like how the landscape is shown through the window. Uh, I like the stains on the window, but I'm missing something can be shown uh, inside, like some kind of faces looking, so making the image deeper, more interesting. And it looks like this. Okay, great. So let's see your scores. It's, oh, it's from one to five. Yeah, so one to five. So, okay. So, did we write down the scores? All right. So the next image is. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's part of it. The next image is from Anthony Tucker or Anthony Tucker. I mean, uh, it's funny how we're going to have a recurring theme of many of the genres of photographer. In photography, the sh photographer's shadow uh, bouncing with real life is, um, is another classic theme. 
Uh, I think the relationship between these three main parts of the photograph isn't quite uh, right. I, I feel slightly annoyed that she's sort of pushed off into the top right-hand corner. I don't feel that the photo breathes very well. So in other words, part of the skill of putting a photo together is not so much dealing with the main objects, it's dealing with the space between the objects and the things, especially when you have an image which is very simple, which in this case it is. So. I think there's more that could have been done with the relationship between these three different um, uh, uh, elements of the photo, and that slightly frustrates me because it's not uncomfortable in an interesting way. You can make something difficult and tense and actually make it to its advantage. Here, it just hasn't quite come off because it's neither difficult tense or sort of symmetrical tense. So it's sort of, uh, it's not a bad picture, but it's not one that I'm gonna be hanging on my wall. Okay, Richard? Yeah, I, I don't really uh, agree about the, uh, the, the, the way that people are placed in the, in the photograph. People or, or shadows are placed in the photograph. I, I have no problem with the woman being up on the top. Uh, it's true, as Martin is talking about, the, you know, all the genres of, of, um, of uh, photography. Okay, so this, this is, uh, you know, I mean, if I have a problem with it, it's that uh, this kind of thing has been seen quite a bit. Uh, I'm also a little confused by the shadows. Uh, okay, we know that one of them is a photographer. I don't, I don't know what the other, the other thing is doing. Uh, and I'm not sure that it's very interesting. But uh, it's, I think it's, uh, it's pretty well done for what it is. Okay, Tomas? Uh, I like the composition, but what I'm missing here with the image is relation between the subject, the woman, and the shadows, kind of gesture. So making the image more alive, because as uh, Richard told, probably the man on the right is a photographer. Person on the left, I don't know who it is. So uh, what I'm missing is the correlation between those subjects, making the image more interesting. Okay, great. So let's see those scores for Anthony Tucker. Ready? Up. All right. So we get all set. Again. All right. So. I've got my whole pile here with three on it. Tough, tough judging. Yeah. So. Um, all right. So, and I guess we can switch who goes first, so we go back yeah, and yeah. forth. Yeah. So, so the next round will be uh, starting with Tomas on that side. The next one is from uh, Barbara Curcio. Uh, I think quite a lot of people like to play with the posters and what's happening on the street, but uh, what I'm missing is uh, like combination between those two persons, like the man, uh, this lady which is walking, and the bird uh, on the poster. Uh, it's quite good composed, but uh, it's not strikes me. That's it's a very good image. Okay, Richard. Um. You know, we, we photographers look for uh, peculiar things uh, very often. And here, the, the, the guy has found a peculiar thing, or the, guy, the man or the woman. Uh, but that's the only interesting thing in the photograph. I mean, if, if the photograph uh, uh, just had the, the woman and, the, and the whatever bird that is, uh, it might be interesting. Obviously, obviously, it's been seen quite a bit and so on. We know about, you know, the, the things playing with the relationship between the, you know, a person and, and something in the background uh, are, you know, it's very tempting to do them, but they ha really have to be well done in order to, for them to work. So I don't think this one works. It's, a, it's an interesting uh, idea, an in interesting perception, but it doesn't go beyond that. Okay. Martin? Yes, I mean, I, I, I basically agree with this. I think it might have benefited if, if he got in closer and it had become more surreal. In other words, Obviously, the great thing about this photo is the woman's face and the relationship to the bird. And, and then uh, we have this other stuff coming in, which actually doesn't help that much. So to make it weirder uh, and to actually exaggerate that, I would have been tempted to come in closer to make that um, woman and the relationship to the bird even bigger in the photograph. And then you exaggerate uh, this sort of, uh, that sort of observation that you've made. Because remember, how we frame a picture tells us a lot about our attitude towards the subject and what we're trying to say about it. And this is constantly um, why, you know, actually composing with your feet even rather than cropping is such an integral part of, of photography, to actually 
completely demonstrate what it is you're trying to say and your relationship to it. So in that sense, it's slightly confusing because they've found something interesting and haven't quite followed through with the sort of real journey. All right, so let's see those scores. Ready? Woo. All right. Okay, okay. It's getting harder and harder. <laughs> Okay, great. Thank you. The next one is uh, from Christian Robotti. And yeah, I guess Martin, you want to start? Uh, yeah, Richard should start. Oh, Richard, Richard, yes. To keep it fair. Keep it fair. Okay, well, um, this has its good points and its less good points. I think the a good, good point is that it's uh, well organized as a photograph, as a, as a rectangle. Um, you know, it's nice to see the, the, the guy or the girl took, got the caught the moment when the wind was blowing just right and the flags are spread out and so on and people are silhouetted. Um, I don't feel that it's very original, but uh, I think it's, it's well, well done for what it is. Okay. Thomas? Uh, I think it's quite a good picture. What I don't like, it's on the right, the two men that their head are together, so with the shadow, it's hard to see. Uh, what I like also how the light is shaping the woman on the left here and how the flags are waving. So I think it's quite a good picture. Okay. Mart? I have to confess I'm a complete flash junkie and uh, I just love the effect that flash has had. And this picture to me screams out, I want flash now. I want to see what's going on with these faces. I want to see what's happening. And also it would take the picture away from being quite pictorial almost a cliche, into something much more intelligent and much more interesting. So I, I confess, really, I'm actually overlaying my own sort of natural prejudice to use Flash as a tool to make pictures more interesting because, you know, you can hyper re up reality and that makes often very good reading. So uh, I feel somewhat betrayed here because this is a great start, a great location. I love this notion of America-Cuba relations and yet I'm missing the information I really want. Okay, um, yeah, time for the scores then. Ready, up. All right. All right, so the next one, I'm going to start with Martin, is from Chao Pui. And Chao is in town, but he's shooting on the beach with Matt Stewart, so he, uh, he's on his way. Uh, I quickly look at this, I think, wow, this is really weird. And, you know, I like to come across a picture. Uh, and unlike some of the other pictures we've seen today where you know the genre that it comes from, this is just downright weird. And I like weird stuff. So I'm immediately thinking, what on earth is going on here? And in fact, I'm looking at it now. I still don't know what's going on. It's obviously some kind of theatrical event. I don't know if that lighting has been coming in on the side. I like the sort of guy on the right. I like the hand. So generally, I'm, I'm quite impressed with this because it's a big sort of chaotic muddle. And I'm intrigued and I'm mystified is to exactly what's going on, and that keeps me interested. And because I don't recognize it as a genre, in the way that we've seen some of the other classic genres of photography, I like that. You know, this keeps me on my toes. If I saw this as part of a book, I'd want to look at the whole thing and explore what on earth is this guy got in his head, because it's interesting. All right, great. Richard? Um, I like it also, and I find it interesting. I think that it's um, not tight enough that there's too much space on the, too much empty space on the right side. So it's not, it's not concentrated enough. But I, I, I do agree that it's, um, it's something that you don't see all the time and, um, and um, it's interesting and mysterious. All right, Thomas? Uh, I like surrealism in photography and this uh, image, it's quite surreal, uh, especially when you're looking on the colors and then the shadow of the hand on the right, the, on the left you have, I don't know, Scorpio, so it's really weird and hard to identify what's happening. It's an event or some party or I don't know what. Uh, I also like the image. Perfect. Okay. So time for the scores. All right. Ready? All right. So weird is good. Okay, this one is from Dante Sisofo. Dante Sisofo, yeah. Very nice, uh, classical. 
uh, and uh, there's a, uh, I, I guess these people have the same problem with the right side of the frame. Uh, uh, this is, in order to really be perfect and really grab you, it, ha it would have to be tighter on the right side. There's too much, uh, there's nothing going on there, I think. So it's good, but it could be better. Okay, Tomas? Uh, I like how the image is composed, so you're starting with the shadow on the left and you go with the hands and see more of the image when you are going further and see all those people. And it's also kind of surreal with, the, with those hands going out and then you can see the guy on the right side with the eye that is uh, looking something beyond the frame. So I think it's a pretty good image. Yeah, I, I like this. It reminds me of a windmill. I, I've got this feeling that this, uh, these hands are all going round like they're being blown by the wind, you know. So that's the immediate feeling I got from looking at the picture. And that's actually a very difficult thing to actually get into a photograph. So in that sense, I, I think it's a pretty good picture, in fact. And I, I like that sort of sense of motion that you get from catching this still moment. That's a pretty rare attribute, uh, and in that sense, um, I'm going to really respond well to this. Perfect. Okay. So let's see the scores for Dante Sisopo. And if, I, if, if, I'm, if I'm pronouncing the name wrong, please correct me. All right. So let's see. All right. It's getting tight. All right. Did you, Lauren, did you get everything? All right. Yeah, that's Dante. No. <laughs> no, I don't know. Okay. Uh, all right, next one. Yeah, this is from Jacek Zust, S Z U S T. All right, so Thomas. Yeah. Okay, so with street photography, a lot of people are using the symbol stripes and black and white, uh, but I really like the image. It's uh, probably it's a reflection, uh, and I really like how it corresponds the man on the left and the woman that is looking somewhere and hear the sticker on the right of the next lady. So uh, I think it's a pretty good image making your kind of brainwash a little bit. Okay, great. So. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's got a good sort of sense of um, motion in it. Uh, the guy on the left hand side is for me the, the weak point because I think he's just a bit too near the frame. I think he's just too dominant. If you look at the picture and you half close your eyes, you find that that way that the image being pushed out to the left because of his dominance of the face within the photo doesn't quite pull off. You know, sometimes you, you can have these components on the edge and they work. And here, this is the only element really which sort of lets down the picture. I like the arrow in the head. I like the woman in the middle. I like the sort of general look and feel of it. It just doesn't quite come off. So pretty good effort, and I like the sort of feel of it. It's not perfect, though. Um, uh, I like it quite a lot. I think that the guy on the left is, uh, is just right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, because, you know, he's, he's, he's uh, balancing uh, the three women. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good that he's so big and and so prominent in the photograph. Uh, I can't see, of any, uh, see anything to criticize in the composition of the picture. Um, you know, I think there's a, there's a nice uh, the dynamic, the movement, and you know, in fact, the, the, the mo movement uh, in the looks, it, it looks as though the, the movements are going toward the, toward the man. Obviously, they're, they're not, but uh, that's the way it looks. So I, I like this picture a lot. Okay. So all three win. Okay, so time for the scores for Jacek Zust. Three, four point five, and four. Okay, I wonder if we'll get a five tonight. We'll see. So next, no, it's image. impossible to get the perfect picture. No, no, but more it, or less, it really is a problem uh, to, to, to vote a five if, if we hadn't haven't seen all the pictures. Right. Yeah. Because uh, then, you know, what if we see one afterwards that we want to give a six to? Exactly. Yeah. So, all right. This this one is from Jason Schumer. And we're gonna start. Where do we start? This Martin. Martin, you wanna start? Yeah, I, I like the picture here. I particularly like the two kids um, on the left pointing in. Uh, they really make it, and uh, I like the central uh, girl and. 
I don't even know what this thing is. It's something flying through the air. A uh, piñata. Yeah, and, and the photographer's own shadow has a contribution to play. It's sort of well positioned. So in that sense, the, the, the genes on the right are a little bit bright, but maybe you could just bring that down a bit. But um, you know, generally, for me, the, the real star of the show are the two kids pointing in. You know, that's the bit that I really like, and uh, that's a very nice gesture, and it's almost surreal, and I like that about it. So in that sense, uh, there are components in here which are making me think, uh, I don't quite know what's going on. And again, it's not a recognizable picture, and I always welcome a picture that has a freshness to it, rather than a sort of old genre that we all have in the back of our mind, which often we try and recreate with our photographs. We're, we're trying to re-simulate a picture we have in our head. And here, there's no previous reference to it. So that, to me, is a great plus point. Perfect. Okay, I, th I think uh, there are the boys on the left uh, pointing, but everything, everyone is pointing to the center. Uh, as Martin says, the, there's the shadow of the, uh, of the photographer, but uh, you know, the, the, the other shadows also are all more or less leading to, the, to that central point. I think it's, a, it's pretty well seen and, and pretty interesting. Yeah, I also like the children on the left. Uh, also, the shadow uh, which goes from the bushes, it looks for me a little bit like a horse or something, but pointing to the center. Uh, for me, there is a little bit too much of the lady on the right because she didn't, uh, she's not adding anything interesting to the image. So I would go a little bit closer maybe to make the shot. Okay, so let's see the scores for Jason Schumer. Is Jason here, by the way? There he is, okay. Oops. All right. We're the same again. Oh, <laughs> Lauren, you got it? All right, let's see the next picture. This is from Jonathan Gewertz. Okay, I think that the, what's interesting in this picture takes place on the right hand side and what take, what's in the left hand side is a, a total uh, is, is totally a, um, lacking in interest and I, th I wish that the, the person who took this picture had turned the camera around and taken a vertical shot instead um, I'm not, I don't know whether that would have worked whether, whether it would have been successful but I think that the, this, this picture with interesting elements is not balanced Uh, what I'm missing uh, is the focus, I think, inside, because when I'm looking on the image, that's not the gecko or lizard is on the windshield, uh, that, that what's reflecting. So I would make it more into this, and we will still see the, the lizard on the shield if it uh, will be having low depth of field. Uh, but there is missing kind of... Strong, strong, strong moment or interesting composition to make the image better. Okay. No, I, I mean, I echo what uh, people have said about the composition. I, I'm not convinced doing a vertical would be the correct solution. I think just basically moving to the right. You know, we can keep the horizontal, but uh, I would have the um, the telegraph pole just coming into the top left-hand corner of the image, and we don't know what else, what other goodies there are on the right-hand side. So. Um, you know, it's an interesting observation. I like the surreal nature of it, uh, and uh, the components are basically good, and the Greco is the star on the, uh, on the windscreen or the car window, whatever it is, but it, it hasn't quite played off. It's, it's sort of uncomfortable in an inter uninteresting way. So that sort of tension that could be there hasn't quite been gleaned by, as, uh, as people point out, just not quite the right viewfinding in relationship to the subject to the camera frame. Okay, great. So let's see the scores for Jonathan. Good words. Oh. Oh, okay. Lauren, you got that? All right, so let's see the next image. <laughs> this is from jo Joris the Weird. What they were? Uh, who starts? Tomas. Yeah. I look up. I like absurd in this situation, uh, but uh, I don't like the framing. 
So it's a little bit too much of the left. I know that the boat should balance it, but I think it's a little bit too much to the right, the man is. Uh, but I really like the situation uh, and the absurd of it's shown. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, you, you put the picture on the screen and it's an instant laugh. And, and that's a great um, attribute for any photographer to achieve that, you know, because the world out there is pretty funny, but actually making it translating that into a photo is not as easy as you would think. I agree with the, uh, the previous comment from Thomas about the composition. I'm slightly frustrating the yacht. Had the yacht been bigger, it could have worked, but I'm really frustrated about not having enough space by that guy on the right-hand side. He's just, you know, I just really need that extra bit of space around him. So he becomes as part of the whole frame. At the moment, it's just sort of slightly tilted. But, I mean, the great virtue of getting this guy, uh, you know, standing there looking like Jesus coming in, you know, do not underestimate how difficult that was probably to, to set up, or not. maybe it's a friend of his doing it, I don't know, to actually get that. And, and you know, I, I take my hat off to the guy for actually being there before it actually happened, waiting for Jesus to arrive and save us all. And maybe Donald Trump sent him. <laughs> well, you say set up. Um, is that, is that what we're supposed to be doing? Uh, no, I don't think no. so. I mean, I, I just said that because... No, but, no, but you, do you think it's been set up? Or? Okay. Uh, yeah, no, it might have been. And, and if it was, maybe it doesn't belong uh, where we are here. Uh, but, um, no, I mean, we, you know, street photography, things you find, uh, um, you know, if it was set up, it wouldn't be found. It would be, you know, you, talk, you told the guy where to go. It would, be, it would be interesting to know. Uh, I think it's clear that, that the photographer is too far away. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know the, there are interesting elements, but it's, it's much too loose. You know, I mean, you know, you, you, I think you two are saying more or less the same thing, that, you know, the boat's not big enough or, uh, uh, or you want to see more on the right. I mean, it's, it's unbalanced. Uh, if there's anything interesting here, it's, it's uh, the, the four people and uh, the four people. And all the rest is not interesting. So, you know, you, should, you have to get closer or zoom in or somehow uh, uh, concentrate more on the things that, that are important and less on the wave, the sky, and so on. Okay, so time for the scores. All right, so, Lauren, you got that? All right, so next, next image. This is from Masai Shokena. Do I, do I think I start, yeah. You go start, yes. Yeah, yeah so I, I look at this picture quickly and I, I like it. I particularly like the relationship of the shadow of the lamp, we assume that what it is, with the, uh, the bent arm of the girl. That really sort of makes it, I think. And I like the fact that also her midriff also looks a bit like an arm, so that, that sort of surreal nature all, all adds into the picture, and um, it, it's, it's a bit of a vacuum on the right slightly, but I, I guess I can tolerate that. Perhaps, again, it would have been slightly better to have pushed the viewfinder over to the left a bit more to had given the end of the lamp some space to breathe. But generally, I, I, I like it. I think it's got a nice tension to it, and it's well observed. It's a classic, you know, street photo of that sort of um, observational quality. Um, yeah, I think the, the left two-thirds of the picture are, are really very nice. Uh, the other third is not very nice. And, uh, in, you know, I think that we should be looking for trying to make it perfect when, when we take the picture. So uh, I think it doesn't quite make it. I mean, the solution, you say to turn the, uh, the, 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 move the, turn the camera a little bit to the left, also getting a little closer might help. Because, you know, you don't, you don't really need the bottom of the woman who's walking past. And as long as you don't cut off the, the feet of the, the woman with the, um, who's holding her hand up, uh, you know, that might help you with, this, with the, the problem of, this, of, the, of the extra space on the right. It's, it's pretty good, but, um, you know, not, it's not going to get a five for me, unlike, unlike all the others. Uh, I like the correlation between the hand and the shadow of the lamp. Uh, I also like the shadow of the girl close to the wall. It looks like she, she is a dancer. Uh, but what I'm missing is the right side, that it's empty and it's not balanced, well balanced. That's a pretty good picture. 
Okay, so let's see the scores. All right. Will we see a five today? All right, next, next image, please. So this is from Nawapat Kansu One. This is a, a nice picture of, uh, of, the, of the sky, but it's kind of lost in, the, in everything around him, uh, which doesn't really add anything, um, and I wouldn't say it's exceptional. I mean, you know, it's nice, it's nice to see nice people, uh, but um, I don't think it's enough to make a photograph. If this person wanted to do a portrait, because we see that the man is looking, so that would be better to approach him and make a very good portrait than uh, hiding behind, I don't know, what's this, a part of the lamp or something, and it's not adding anything to the image. So if doing a portrait, I would much more approach this person and then do a good portrait than like, trying to hide. Yeah, I agree, Savai. It's like the worst of both worlds here. So uh, one of the things that's very annoying when you out with your camera and people see you is they always start laughing and smiling at the moment you think you're going to take a picture. And generally speaking, uh, I'm not against photos in the world of people laughing, but uh, when they're laughing for you because they think it's funny that you're taking a picture of them, it's just bad news. And then why have we got this sort of tree uh, in the middle here, you know, just completely blocking out? We're not seeing much evidence of who the actual person, I assume he's down in Little Havana or something and here in Miami, a you know, great neighborhood where there's lots of things going on and basically we got half a picture of a bit of road and a bit of tree, you know, so the, the only thing that's interesting is the guy smiling in the middle and that I just find annoying. So I'm afraid this isn't working for me. Okay, so let's see the scores. All right. Lauren, you got that? Okay. So next image. Next image is from Neil de la Lana. Uh, I see that nowadays quite a lot of people are using flash uh, to achieve an, a, a kind of effect. But that's, uh, if you are using a flash, it's a kind of form and it needs to give you something. And, uh, but I, here I cannot see anything like two people are probably a man, uh, he's a husband or I don't know, but I cannot see any correlation or something interesting happening. So I also don't understand why you, what the flash was used to take this picture. Okay. I, mean, I would say the flash is used because often when you combine flash with ambient light, you get very interesting results. And uh, the guy with his relationship to the, uh, to the, the piece of sky opening up, it's pretty nice, and the flash there is really agreeable. The flash on the woman, though, is just too much, and it's sort of intense, and it, it over-dominates the picture, and it makes you look at that picture and think, oh, here's someone using flash. I, I really like flash where it sort of becomes just an integral part of the photo, and it sort of works. Now, if this was an advert for CO soft drinks, I'd be very impressed, okay? But uh, as it's not, it's like really a half-made street photo. Uh, it doesn't quite uh, get me going here, so... Um, it's basically a sort of interesting failure. Too much flash. And that's someone, that's coming from someone who loves flash, who's just been telling people, use your, put your flash gun on, like the Cuban-American picture we saw. Um, I think that some of the flash problem can be solved uh, in, the, in working on the, on the, uh, the image. I mean, you know, darkening, uh, darkening it and so on. I like the fact that the, uh, I, you know, I, what you call the placement of the guy's head. I mean, I think that's very important in the picture. I would say that this would be a very good square picture, um, and it's um, as, a, as, a, as a horizontal, less good. I mean, what's, what's interesting, the man, the woman, uh, and the sky, and a little bit of the, the, the building above uh, the, uh, the woman's head. Um, you know, it's, so it's a little empty on the sides, but I think on the whole it's a pretty good picture. Okay, so let's see the scores. Oh, it's getting closer. Wow, okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Lauren, you got so. We're going to see. We're going to do probably three.
three more, and then we have to tally the votes and, uh, and then decide what the winner will get. Uh, so a the next, huh? A new Leica. <laughs> a new, a new Leica uh, t-shirt. <laughs> Peter, yeah, Peter, calling Peter. Uh, so the next image, please, is Patricia Rocha. Patricia Rocha, and we can start back to Martin. Okay, I mean, I assume we're back down in Little Havana, and uh, the, the, the faces are interesting. I like the girl in the forefront. Now, if anything, one of the great underexploited aspects of, of street photography is in fact the, um, the telephoto lens, because street photographers, you look at that show out there, there's not a single picture done with a telephoto lens. You know, it's just not in the domain. I'm not even saying this is a, a telephoto lens, but what's interesting is the effect that things out of focus in the foreground can have. Uh, and that's where we're starting to see evidence of this, but it's not quite, uh, for me, uh, pushed as far as I'd like to see. In other words, this lot in the front here, I'd like to see them more out of focus, and then perhaps the flags retaining, so perhaps even longer, could be interesting. So I sort of like it because part of me thinks, um, you know, the instinct would be to focus on the front. So they've made a bold decision not to, but they haven't really gone far enough in exploring the potential of what that may have to offer. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting situation. It's just not quite fulfilled as to what could make a great picture here. Um, I probably couldn't disagree with you more. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, I would say that I would say that the, that the person uh, just focused in the wrong place. I mean, the, the 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 focus is on things that aren't interesting at all. It's on uh, it's not, not even on the second level of flags. It's on the third level of flags. The, there's nothing going on there. So, uh, you know, I just think that, that from a technical point of view, point of view, this this picture is a, is a failure. I mean, uh, it's uh, the. Okay, you know, you take a picture of a bunch of, a bunch of people in a crowd, uh, it's, you know, it can often be somewhat interesting in itself, but, you know, you can take millions of pictures like this. Why, you know, why this one and not another one? You know, the, the, uh, uh, if you were, you, you had, if he, had fo he or she had focused on, the, on the, the people in the front, that might be a little more interesting. It would still be very flat, you'd have too much sky and so on. You still have the, the people on the right uh, who, uh, you know, they're completely cut off, you can't see what they're doing. Is, I, don't, I can't see anything really interesting uh, in the picture as it's been taken. I'm not, I'm not interested in, in the focus on the little boy uh, uh, sitting on someone's shoulders all the way in the back. Uh, he's too small. Uh, I, I, don't know what this, I don't know what this picture is about, and I can't see uh, any redeeming qualities. Uh, for me, this image, for sure, it's pretty chaotic. So because what's the most inter interesting part is, is this uh, young girl in the front. For me, she looks a little bit like from a painting of Monk Scream, like with those face. Uh, and this is the most interesting part of the image because making focus on the boy, it doesn't add anything. It's like uh, the boy is like not reacting anyhow for what is happening. So for me, it's... Uh, the problem of technician, so the focus should... I don't know if the focus should be on, on her. It's uh, because then I think you should change the composition or something else, so it's very hard to tell. But what I like the most from the uh, stuff is the girl. Okay, perfect. So the all three went, right? So let's see the scores. All right, so next image, please. This is from René Trier. Uh, for me, this image, I think it's a little bit too bright. I would go down a little bit with the exposure. Uh, the composition is pretty okay, uh, but I don't get anything more with this image. It doesn't add, probably it was also shot with some telephoto lens. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. The, f the face of the no. romance also looks... Was oh. it? <laughs> I don't think it was. Yeah, so... Yeah, yeah I, I think it's, uh, it's okay. It's, it's sort of... Um, everything's in its favor. It doesn't quite work. You know, it's, it's a good descriptive picture. The, the different colors are good. The, 
the genes are quite nice in the middle, the woman's all right, but funnily enough, everything's all right, but it doesn't actually work. In other words, you've got all the different components. When you've got a good picture, all the components come together to really add, to make the picture work, and there's some sort of final sort of push that you know is really engaging you. Here, all the visual elements are sort of there, but nothing really comes together. So in that sense, it sort of um, just doesn't quite work. Um, yeah, I would more or less agree with that. I also think that it's a, it's a very flat picture. You know, it's just uh, head on. It's, a, it's a, you know, the, 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 the forms don't become interesting. Um, and I agree that, the, you know, there are many elements, uh, but they don't, they don't really add much to each other. I, I, it is true that they, it's not that there's no connection uh, um, between them or among them. I mean, you know, there, there are similar colors in different parts of the picture and so on, but uh, it doesn't add up to very much, I think. A little flat. Okay, the scores. So we get the scores. So next image, please. This is the last one. It's the last one. Yeah. And this is from Ruben Radding. Yeah. Yes. So it's, it's me. Yeah. So uh, this has got some good things going on. I mean, the, the really powerful bit is the, is the central people with the hands, the two hands in particular. Uh, 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 the gestures there are very nice. And But what's annoying is that I just wish that guy on the left with the shirt, which is in focus, in fact, would just disappear. And in fact, I'd also like the girl on the right to disappear, and then we may actually have a pretty good picture. Then you'd move in a little bit further also. Or you could actually move in, but, but it's... A, it's the yeah, that's right. So you order them out of the way. You come in, because it's a nice wide-angle lens, right? So it must be a 28. And uh, you could have a good picture. So really, the central part of this picture is fantastic. The rest lets the whole thing down. Uh, yeah, I, I think I agree with that uh, pretty fully. Um, uh, certainly, the woman on the right it does, you know, adds absolutely nothing to the picture. Uh, on the contrary, the guy on the left, uh, you know, if there was something else on the right, might be okay. I mean, he's he's, uh, he's too present. If he if he was still there but a little less present, it might it might be better. The, the, uh, obviously, the the central part of the picture is where things are happening. That the th interesting things are happening. Yeah, I like the most, the, the most interesting part is the central. Also, I, li I like the V composition. So it's like framing, but uh, for me, it's too much of the men on the left and the women on the right. I don't know if the men would have a kind of gesture or something would be happening. It's, it would make the image more interesting. Uh, but the best part is the, the central, the two persons on the left, the gesture between the couple and the men on the right. All right, so let's see the scores and of the final image. All right, so, all right, so thank you very much. And uh, while they, we're tallying up the scores. Oh. All right, that was our electronic system. <laughs> Already had the results. So let's see, the, the, the winner of the uh, 2016 MSPF Slam is Dante Sisofo. So. Huh? I don't think Dante is here, no. Huh? So yeah, so we, um, we're gonna give him a, mail him a, a MSPF t-shirt and we'll try to see if we get something from Leica. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you the judges, it was a lot of fun.